recording. Terrific to see those that of you have um, joined and those that of you who are listening to the replay, I welcome you all and we're from all over the world, which is wonderful. We've got people from London, Australia, New Zealand, Mexico, um, not quite sure, South Africa. And I don't know where you're from, Bernie, maybe you'd like to put that into the chat box, that'd be lovely. Um, if you need to put your hand up for a question, then you can chime in with the uh, participation of putting your hand up. Otherwise, we just ask you to turn your, uh, go on mute so that we can get the best recording with the PowerPoint. And I'm going to proceed to share the screen and open this up so we can get maximum view. Um, I cannot see the chat box while I'm sharing the screen in this open, uh, in the full view. So uh, Suzanne will probably chime in and then I can come back to the room. All right. So what we're looking at today is 21 days um, to be visible and build your audience. And really because 21 ways is there's a lot and there's a strategy for every single way that I'm actually going to show you There's there's strategies you can do. But what my intention was with this is to just build your awareness of what opportunities are out there to build your audience or connect with people and to build your authority. Uh, and to build, have people see you as, as the wonderful, brilliant person you, you are. I'm just hearing some background noise, I'm sorry, but I am actually, um, if you're not on mute, if you can just mute it, it would be fantastic, thank you. I can just see that there's still a few people that are not muted. So you might even want to mute everyone, Suzanne. Okay, so as I said, it's going to be a brief overview of um of it and i had i am giving you a few little pointers in some areas and some of these are going to be quite obvious to you and others may not so we'll just go through them and i think one of the ways that we're all familiar with is you know what's going on in social media and there's so many opportunities to develop visibility and authority within social media. So we are going to look at, at these. But what's the purpose of doing so? Well, I see the purpose as letting you finding people you love, letting people find you that love you and create a following to create a, a tribe, if you like, or a following of your right people. Sorry, I went a bit fast then, of your right people. So let's look at Facebook because that's like number one, one of the um, big ones that a lot of people are using. It's Now, I want to point out that right from the gecko, no one is suggesting, and I certainly am not suggesting, that you try and do all these strategies or all these platforms. In fact, what I train is that you choose the one that you like to work with first and you get that up and running and then if you feel you need another avenue another platform then you can move it into other ones and in fact when you get the foundation of say one platform whatever that platform is that you're going to choose then that's your foundation and you can actually then um multi-purpose what you use on one platform in many platforms but I don't want to go into that today we're just going to look at the various platforms and I just threw in a couple of statistics you know globally Facebook users 1.69 billion people are on Facebook which is crazy but one of the things I want to point out is that your front your personal page is the doorway to your business. And there are ways to optimize your personal page so that you can be seen as somebody who is doing something extraordinary or offers something um, that is beyond just lifestyle photos. Although lifestyle photos are there so that people can get to know, like, and trust you and who you are as well. Uh, we should be, if you're doing a Facebook strategy, then daily post is the best way to go. In fact, some experts say that you should be doing two or three a day. Um, perhaps 
that's not a good starting point because every single person's situation is going to be different. Your platform might be different. How often you do things could be different because maybe you're already working, maybe you only you have limited time or you're still learning on and getting it out there. But the whole idea is to start conversations, even in your profile page, and also to let um, the public find you so that it's not just for friends um, and to give value into that group. But also, if you want, you can move people from your Facebook personal page into a private group if you want. So the second part I wanted to mention, so you've, you've, you've not, this is now I'm talking about other people's groups and forums. And this is a great place to actually find um, audience. And the way there's, there's quite a strategy with this, but in, the, in brief, um, it is that you find, say, three to five groups or forums where your audience may be able to be found. And then join those groups as long as the posting guidelines suit what you, are, you can do. In other words, um, I'm a mem I've just joined groups of, say, uh, three or four different groups. And the first thing I do is go to the about and see what their harmonious guidelines are for being able to post. Because if you're trying to build a business, you want to find places where you're allowed to introduce yourself. You want to find a place where you're able to put up a posting, maybe of a website or an offer that you have, or some engagement, right? You want to be able to promote yourself. And often they'll have, on day one, you can do this, day two, you know, Tuesday, you can do that. Thursday, you can do that. So have a look at those and you can create a action sheet relative to the days that you're allowed to. And I would say, don't go into too many groups because then it's hard to find the time to be actively involved in them. I would suggest keeping it like one, two, three initially, no, maybe no more than, and find those top three that you can engage in. And then when you're part of that group, become the problem solver and, a, and be seen as a leader to other people in that group. So when they're, when they're posting their challenges, questions, problems, ask, talk to them about it, you know, find out, see how you can solve that. And perhaps not just within the reply, but also private message them and let them and start the conversation with them. And I want to really point out, no matter what this strat these strategies are, particularly on Facebook and a few others, you are not trying to sell anything. You are just starting conversations and finding that sweet spot if, they, if you can reach out and if they're in that conversation, they'll, obvious, they'll often be a moment that you can connect and say, hey, that's what I do. Um, you know, maybe there's an opportunity I can help you. Do you want to have a chat? But not you don't go for the jugular, as I say. At the beginning, you build rapport with that person or um, initially. And there's a whole training that I do on that, actually. So LinkedIn. LinkedIn um, also has a huge number of followers. You know, uh, 660 million LinkedIn users spread over 200 uh, countries. They are the biggest in the US market. If you want to get, you'll have to look for Australian or New Zealand figures if you want. But interestingly, they are B2B leads that come from there. You can 80%. So there is a percentage that is uh, business to consumer. And the, oops, sorry. And um, there certainly are ways you can do that. But what I'm just going to put out at the very top is to consider there are ways to optimize. I don't know if many people have a LinkedIn profile. So just put a Y and an L in the chat box if you do have a LinkedIn profile. That would be interesting to know if there's many people that do, because it is an amazing place uh, for many people to find their audience there. And there are strategies that are available to learn about that 
And uh, in actual fact, I'm doing um, a collaboration with a company that specialises this. And um, maybe at another time, I'll be able to bring that to the table. I need to just close. Pretty much, pretty much everyone has got a LinkedIn profile by that yes, oh, wow. no answer. Yep. Mm -hmm. Interesting, good. Save chat and I need to minimise the chat again if I can because I can't see my own stuff. How do I minimise it? No. <laughs> I've got this chat box sitting right in the middle of everything and I can't, I can't see my own right On mine, there's a little um, minimisation sign on that chat box at the top on the right-hand side. It's on the right-hand side? No. It's not happening and I can't move it. <laughs> Just stop share for a second and I'll come back. That's probably the best way. If you have a LinkedIn, there are ways to optimise the page. And a lot of people, because it is b and and people are finding jobs, write it like a resume. And if you are in business for yourself, it should not be written like a resume. In fact, I've just gone through an amazing training with this and with this um, organisation that specialises in it and bringing this to the table in the future, is that you should be considering it like a ad, like the first few lines, like an ad of what you do and maybe who you help. And then the other parts of it should be a little bit more like a sales letter and there's a formula you can use for that. It is recommended to also post daily if you want more engagements and to connect and make connections with your audience. And that could be done through um, other people's connections, following groups. And once again, it's all about starting conversations, you know, because if you go in with the mindset, I'm just going to sell people, that's not going to work. If you want to be able to work with the people that you resonate as well with. So starting conversations is a great way to do that uh, and comes to the right point of maybe offering help. Uh, you might actually offer help in other networks like other groups and that. You might be able to add value. And the interesting thing about LinkedIn, so much of it can be automated in the communication, but I wouldn't suggest setting up an automation system until you've pr tried and tested and you've got some, some maybe some clients under your belt from that system first. And then there are ways to link, to um, use an amazing, and I, I just, I'm actually reaching out and seeing if I can actually suggest this CRM program that manages leads within LinkedIn and it does so 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 much um, and if anyone is at that point that they uh, need something like that within the LinkedIn just reach out to me and let me know because um, perhaps I can point you in the right direction for that as well. Okay so we'll move on to the YouTube and um, for those of you that love to do videos, you, you know, YouTube is an amazing thing, amazing platform. And in actual fact, there's over 1.9 billion active users monthly, which is just extraordinary. So that means there's a million hours a day being watched, or, oh, sorry, 1 billion hours a day being watched over, on um, YouTube and if we actually, hours I should say, and we actually divided that by years, we'd come out with some extraordinary figure of how many years of watching that would be. So the important thing once again with YouTube is, you know, it's about having a theme and a branding and a content plan of what you're going to put up. Once again, it needs to be fairly regular you can pre-record a lot of things and, and schedule them, which is great. Um, you need to know how to optimize them to so that people find them. And there's some incredible tools that you can use to do that with. Um, you don't need complicated equipment. You can start just with a smartphone and a little bit of lighting. Uh, there are very simple editing software if you need to do that. So there's some really amazing strategies you can do with that uh, and understanding how to create the script for a, a video that's impactful, but still being authentic. Sorry, I've done it again. There you go. I've got this big line across. So there you go. That's better. Um, so, you know, YouTube is definitely a, an amazing 
platform to use and, and it's just growing and growing on people's uh, ability. And it, and it also acts as a search engine. You know, YouTube is a search engine like Google, whereas um, we don't, it's one of the bigger search engines, if you like, um, because people can put keywords in and find you on topics that they're interested in, etc. So uh, I sort of like YouTube. Instagram is very quickly growing as well. There wasn't much statistics, but uh, if you know what a story is, there's 500 active stories worldwide in 2019, and they're imagining this to grow exponentially um, in 2020. And the there's when you go onto you, has anyone got a YouTube channel? I'd be just put yet yeah, a wine. Um, sorry, a wine and I on the yes. So let's see who's got YouTube channels and. Um, so we've got a couple of, I'm not going to click the chat box because I won't be able to get rid of it. <laughs> okay, I can see a few coming in. That's great. So while you're doing that, um, the important bit is once again, is to have that very first bit about you, what you do as a platform. And Instagram have, can really be used these days to build a business. Um, I, I had a client who's mainly using this as her platform of creating a really lovely look and feel of what she does. She's consistent. She's, she's doing something every day on it. She's very clear about her message. She's giving value in it. Um, there's ways that you can use hashtags to reach other audiences. Uh, once again, it's important about being authentic and you can interact with your followers with this as well. And you can also leverage off, off other people's followers. But I would say learn from an expert as well, because that's when you get the, the maximum out of it. The, the woman that, um, that I love to follow on this, her name is Kat Corey. So it's K-A-T corey c-o-r-o-y highly recommend her as a person to teach you how to optimize instagram in business as well okay so i've got number six here is host an online challenge and you've probably seen some people do that um, no matter what industry you're in there's always a way to do a challenge um, and, and optimize that, but make sure you sort of got a good framework to do that with as well. Number seven, podcasts. <laughs> so here you've got a couple of options. You can become a guest on other people's shows, or you can even open up your own show. So in regard to um, opening up your own show, it's you don't even need to be doing interviews with other people. You could actually just be doing commentary or trainings or discussions yourself with opening it up. So in other words, you could almost take either a video or um, something you've written and then do an audio with it and you've got a podcast. You can create a podcast channel. So it's not a very complicated thing to start that way. And then as you get comfortable and you create a following, you could probably reach out and interview other people as well. I did put Steve um, Olsher's um, dot com here because I find he has got, he teaches both how to become a guest and also how to open up your own. And his material is very, very good. And he actually also runs um, an event where you can meet, you can actually pitch and meet other hosts. And once again, there's a whole strategy to this. There's a right way and a wrong way to go about it. Uh, but look at that, 9 million Americans listen to podcasts monthly. I'm sorry, I've only got the American statistics, but it gives you a good idea. And, it, and because we are able to work from anywhere in the world as a, an online coach, therapist, um, so many ways we can work online, whether it be one-on-one -on -one or group, um, 
the American market's really open. And from my experience, I have found the American market to be one that is actually easy, quite easy to tap into. So if you are in New Zealand or America, don't dismiss it. Or um, Christelle, when I had a conversation and, and she's in South Africa and, you know, there's clients there, but there's also clients that you could actually reach in the UK, in America. I mean, it's really amazing that you can actually specialise in the areas people with the people that you want. And when you are doing uh, targeting on audiences, there's ways of filtering down and just finding those people in those countries and places that you want to find them in as well. Okay, I put media interviews. Um, as I know, there was a um, one of the Embrainy coaches that when she first launched herself, that's the way she got launched was with public relations and media interviews. Um, and that can be, when I say interviews, it doesn't, it could be, it could be TV, it could be radio, it could be uh, interviewed for a magazine. There's many, many ways you can actually go into media and be part and be shown as somebody who's an expert with that. In that. Another platform is Printster. Is that how you print Pinterest? I should say Pinterest. Now, I just thought I'd throw in a few tips in here. You do, if you want to do it for business, then they do suggest ideally that you create at least 60% of your own content, but 40% can be other people's, and that you um, pin consistently and their suggestion was 10 a day which I thought was a rather high but the thing is you can have different boards with different topics under your Pinterest I'll call it the channel your overall Pinterest channel can you can have different boards on different topics and um obviously they'd need to be well described and you need a minimum of 10 pins on each for it to be effective but then you can actually multi-pin across all your boards to get your 10 up a day and that would include some of your own material and some of other material. Um, once again Pinterest is like a search engine so then in your descriptions uh, to attract your ideal client you would need to use keyword that are going to appeal to them and there is a way of learning that and the thing that i like about it as far as your pins if you are doing videos or um or instagram videos or youtube videos you can actually directly have them play in your pinterest account and i thought that was a mar marvelous way of multi-purposing when you get into having maybe multiple platforms but once again i'm going to stress that often people only work in one platform and one platform only is where they get all their clients from so it's a really about not spreading yourself thin but finding which ones is the best one for you to use and then if you um, maybe got a virtual assistant working with you or something down the track then you can actually roll it out and be a little bit more multi-platformed but look at that 320 million active users every month <laughs> and they're expecting that to go up to 100 million users so quite extraordinary partners so maybe you can find a community or an influencer an influencer is an expert in your arena that you can partner with and become an expert in what you do to give value to that community or group and in a way you could say that's what i offered with uh, embraining is to bring some value to that community now there what happens with that it actually means that if somebody likes you and trusts you and they might want to find out more about what you can do and maybe how they can help you uh, you can help them i should say so this is something that i like and um, as i mentioned i've just reached out to an influencer in 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 linkedin 
because I believe that is an amazing vehicle that's sort of underutilized in the business to consumer view and there's great opportunities there and and I think some of you may have come out of corporate or as an executive in the past and maybe you resonate with those sort of people more than what you resonate with them on uh, say Facebook and they're, they're easier to find in, in my opinion they're easy it's easier to find the right people so um, partnering up with people is a, is a great way to, to maybe look at that. And I was actually talking to a client the other day and she, she um, what does she do? She does, she's a dancer, physiotherapist, healer, and she mainly works with um, athletes and um, who both run or cycle or both or hike. And um, once I shared this, process to her she immediately reached out to a couple of community and has already secured a, a, a couple of webinars that she'll be hosting with those communities um, to then probably add more people to her Facebook you know to her tribe basically that that can follow her and then things can come out of it <clears throat> so hosting a summit um, I haven't done this, but it is a way that you can leverage from other experts that uh, I would suggest that you, when you, if you did run a summit, you run with people that are doing similar to you or on the side of you. Once again, I'd get some knowledge on how to do it. It is quite expensive to host a summit. So be ready for that. Uh, some people say, you know, anywhere between three to $5,000, depending on this, how long the summit goes for. So the more days it goes for, it can be more expensive. And you can actually outsource a lot of the organization of a summit to somebody and pay them to get it up and running for you. But it is a really good way of building an audience because you're leveraging from other people's audience as well so in other words they're set because they're going to be a speaker at say your summit or your event or an, or an being interviewed or a speaker or bringing something to the table they're also going to be sending the invitation to their list so if they have a list of 5,000 people you're suddenly getting exposure of your summit or event to that 5,000 people and some of them will come and listen and hear you and learn about you and be curious about that. So it's a very powerful way. Now, this one's interesting. Uh, has anyone here done a, uh, an online giveaway? And if so, just put it in the chat box. Yes, and just put a G beside it. So I know we're talking about the giveaway. Um, this is something I've actually just started to participate in um, in May. It's actually the 20th of May, might the one I'm in, <coughs> involved in. And what happens is you provide a gift to, a, though the contributors provide a gift, I should say, the contributors provide a gift to be included in um, this giveaway event. And the gift will end up on your opt-in page or your page that collects names and emails addresses to grow your list and then the person holding the giveaway event um, also promotes the event um, and so invites people to register to the event so that they receive all the gifts being out let me know if I'm being confusing, please just put your hand up on this one because it's so once somebody's registered to attend the giveaway event and the giveaway event is a virtual event where it's mainly uh, facilitated through email and, um, and maybe a webinar then they can choose which ones they want to take. They can take all of them, you know, they can opt into every opt-in box if they want. So for instance, this was just on the same note of hosting an online event. When you're looking for contributors to be part of it. So let's say one of you is a, 
um, a nutritionist, all right, and you wanted to hold an event, then you would look for people that have maybe fitness or certain diet, you know, maybe somebody who specializes in diabetes and someone who specializes in something else, recipes, anybody at all that would like to contribute a gift. And generally the gifts are things like um, an ebook or a mini course or a uh, um, and the um, video explanation or a cheat sheet. There's a whole lot of different things that they could contribute. So that this is the one that I've got going out into that I'll be putting posting in my Facebook group to see if anyone wants to contribute to the giveaway event. And then there's a grand prize at the end of it where uh, someone can sign up. Uh, anyone that's in there can actually maybe win a larger prize. Um, and then what I'm doing at the end of mine is hol holding a, a challenge, which I'll talk about a bit later. Okay, so Instagram. Um, oh, we talked about Instagram before, didn't we? So there's the, there's the website, Insta, Instagram Makeover, and that's Kate Corey. So, um, Another thing you can do with Instagram, so I've made a, a little, done it up twice, but that's okay, is find other Instagram view, users with similar content as yours, and then their followers are the ones who will notice your content and could possibly decide to follow you. So go on to those um, other experts that have similar content and then like and comment and follow on their profiles. And um, you could end up doing a collaboration where they're happy to shout out about, you know, tell their followers about you and you can tell your followers about you. So you have that communication and perhaps you can help each other grow each other's lists. That's usually how that works. With, this, with a shout out, they generally want you to have an audience like they're not going to probably want to do it if you've only got five people or ten people on your your um, followers you probably want about a thousand people or more to be able to um, make that work okay Google Plus <clears throat> this was brought to my attention not so long ago because I have never used it but apparently for the, a couple of my colleagues have been using Google Plus and they've put their profile up there and they get business from it. And it doesn't cost you anything, you know, two, and then this astounded me, 395 million active users. They estimated over 2 million registered users worldwide. So that is horrendously big. And also because you're, if you go into Google Plus, and put your profile up if someone does search your name it'll come up as another way for people to see and meet you so i went oops i think i better do this as well <laughs> get that one up because that one's not a hard one to do and if you've got a good profile on your on your uh linkedin if you've got linkedin you can just copy and paste that across to google plus and you've got a profile up basically so look into that Another one obviously is write a book and I'm going to say book or ebook could be an ebook. Now, the thing about writing a book is, um, and has anyone out there either written a book or looking to write a book? I know Suz Suzanne has, and I think a few of you have, Robin, I can't see all the hands, but I can see a few going up. And from my point of view, and I'm going to just share my point of view on this, is that yes, some people do make money out of books, but the a really good way to to put a book together, if it's particularly in the industry and targeting the the people that you like to work with or talking on a topic that your audience likes or is connects with, I should say then consider using the book or the ebook to bring your audience to you. 
so that you would have in that book, it's called threading, where or seeding some points of action or taking them to your website or taking them to something that connects them to you and particularly at the back, an invitation maybe to have a consultation with you. I have a friend who, um, she's a relationship coach and she, she wrote a book partic primarily for men and all her clientele comes from the book, all of them. And the other thing she did, which I haven't put here, but I'll mention it, is that then she found somebody to read her book. So it was an audio book. Her audio book, I'm not going to tell you how much she makes out of her book, but her audio book brings in an extra five to nine thousand a month. Isn't that extraordinary? And this, this is also really gorgeous. And she's a, she's a beautiful woman. She, um, she's American and she lives here in Mexico. So she's a personal friend. And she found an Australian to be the reader of the book who sounds just like her. So she outsourced it, the reading. She didn't read it herself. Some people prefer to read it themselves. Some people prefer to outsource it. If you do outsource it, make sure it's a very uh, harmoniously compatible voice. And she found one that virtually sounds like her, which is extraordinary. So, um, but I would say that if you're trying to build a business, unless you've got a lot of time to spend on doing that, focus on getting clients first. Or you might just put an abbreviated version, like an ebook together that you can offer as a free gift uh, in your sales process. Create content. I, I, I have a whole program on this and it's because I won't go into it very much. But basically content can be created from a visual point of view. So I've got cameras, photos. It can be created from a written point of view. It can be um, created from a audio point of view. And I know a lot of people struggle with content ideas. And there are some amazing strategies and ways that you can actually create content that even isn't always your own, but you can work with and edit and, and um, I'll say manipulate the content a little bit so it's really yours. Um, and then there's lots of ways you can multi-purpose content as well. So doing a blog for those that like writing, this can be a really great thing. But you, uh, once again, you should have a strategy for it and have uh, post something regularly and have a really sort of cohesive professional brand with what you're doing. Um, you could actually interview colleagues in a special interview series and put that on your blog, which I think is an amazing idea. I haven't done that and I'd like to do that one. Um, I don't know why I've got post on Twitter, but you can basically post your blogs anywhere else to have people come to your blog. Um, you can also do videos, audios or written. So let's say that you have a passion for writing and a lot of the people I know do. They prefer their preferred way of communicating out of the audio, visual and written is through the written but then you could turn that writing into a video or an audio track. And so you're multi, you're giving the same information, but in different ways that people like to learn, read, listen, whatever. You might also um, share and exchange freebies with other people and have them on there. So in other words, you provide information to other people's um, be a guest blogger on other sites. So find complementary sites that uh, to your industry and offer to put your written or audio or visual um, content there for their viewers to see them and always have a call back to action with you, of course. Okay, so I've got here share or exchange freebies or paid items um, with a colleague and for each other's list. And so the little strategy with that is, yes, you can do that, but make sure 
that you get email addresses to do it. So in other words, I might go, okay, I've got a $97 course and I'm prepared to give that out for free. And um, you could, they could be a post or an, that you have on somebody else's social media and um, they share that um, on any social media platform and say, well, when you give me, give me a screenshot via email that you want this and then now you're building your email list so then you can nurture those contacts and you can do an exchange with somebody else that has a similar audience to yours um, we've talked about writing articles but i'm just going to expand that a little bit more you know you've got blogs but you've got online magazines you've got still print media there are lots, loads of places that you can put articles. And I think I've got a couple of them written here for you. One is called BuzzStream. Probably never, has anyone heard of this? I can't see any yeses going up. Okay, so it's really search, it's a um, search engine friendly. Um, so you go on there, and you can actually find other influencers on there. There is a there is a free, you know, you can try it out for free if you want to, um, but there's a paid version to it. So not everyone really goes down this way. But what's really interesting is that if you can hook up with other influencers, this is how you reach those influencers' audience in a way. So you you might be doing um, you might be doing a theme on something, and you go to those influencers and connect with them, generally by their uh, social media accounts, and say, "Hey, I'm doing this topic at the moment, and I wonder if you have a quote on it, or whether you like you know have you got a quote or something you could say about this topic." And you add that to your um, material. And because what often can happen is because also they're on that, they will post that content on their platforms and share it with them because it's sort of visibility for them and that it gives them credibility with their audience as well as you being able to gain credibility via them if that makes sense it sort of it goes it sort of just gives you exposure to an, a whole new audience um and that means that it's also because you've been in it's also getting like an endorsement from another influencers and the strategy which i have not this is not my way of doing things but it could be your way is they say that out of 30 messages of reaching out to other influencers that it can produce three or four contacts. And this is a strategy that was shown to me by a colleague of mine, actually. And um, those contacts then have databases that are going to share what you've put together and put the quote together from the influencer or they might also add something as well like an opinion or something on it so uh, interesting needs a little bit more flushing out but i'm just putting it out there as a very quick thing now this one i've given you the youtube link because this guy the guy who does this um outbrain one he explains it much better than i can but primarily you're reaching audiences from other publishing content. So you can actually reach your audience via, it's sort of like other people who may not have found your, uh, and this is mainly for the writers. So for the writers is that other people will click on your articles and so they will find you, but also there's, a way that other publishing sites also find you within this arena it's a bizarre one um, and it's really for the people who love writing more than anything but it is another way to reach your target audience and has anyone come across re um, reddit reddit 
Yeah, Robin's nodding yes. And a couple of you come across it. So I find this one really interesting because to me, this is a, it's another one where you can sort of find people who are asking questions about things or commenting about things. And if you're prepared to spend the time, then you can go into those and have a look and maybe make comments or offer recommendations and reach out. So I just put in, in the search, I just put in therapists. And as you can see, there's a number of them here on the left hand side. And I chose to select this one here because there's 14,000 odd members. So there it is. There were, at the time I did this uh, screenshot. There were four. There's fourteen thousand, which is um, not so. You know, which I did this screenshot this morning, and then th at the time I did it, there were twenty three people online. So what you then do is you can go in and have a look at the various posts that are there. Now, some of these groups also, just like groups in Facebook, will have rules and regulations of what you can post and can't post. So you need to read those rules and regulations so that you fit that parameters. And you might find that there are, because I know that there is, because I know some of the other groups, is that you actually can have an opportunity, one, to support people in the community who then can get to know, like, and trust you. You're building conversations, you're building connections. You can always, um, uh, create a let's connect on on uh, messenger or something and some of them allow you to promote yourself as well so it's about trying to find people your audience so that's another one and I've got here email marketing which was meant to be 23 yep 23 don't dismiss email marketing for nurturing your your tribe you know, some, every now and again, you hear people saying email marketing is dead. I don't believe it is. I think it's still incredibly strong. Um, there's, uh, her name's Tarzan, actually. And <laughs> she is a master of email marketing and she built her whole business just on email marketing. So whatever platform you're going to do and whatever um, you offer within those platforms, at some point you want to get them into your email list as well so you can nurture those relationships. And they can unsubscribe, there's no problem, but usually you'll give them an opt-in or um, provide them with something of value via the email and then they have a choice either to stick with you or not to stick with you. That's really how that happens. So I'm going to do the warning once more is do not try and do all of these. It's, that would be crazy. And to just focus on one at, and get that up and running and then focus on another if you wish. Or, or find one or two that completely feed each other like Instagram and Facebook are now owned by Facebook. Um, there's ways to use uh, you know, you could maybe do YouTube and Facebook or LinkedIn and, and you, uh, YouTube if that's your thing. So you've just got to find one to focus on, get the foundations in and working before you send yourself into the next one. And you might find, if I have found that any person in business can generally build a really good business on only one or maybe two platforms. You don't need more. I, and I think last week or was, I'm not quite sure if it was this group. No, it wasn't. I was sharing that um, one of my uh, mentors actually with Facebook, she built a six figure Facebook, uh, sorry, a six figure income via Facebook, just doing organic traffic within nine months. She was working 12 hours a day initially, <laughs> not anymore. Single mum, two children said, I can't do it unless I create a different life. And I do teach that strategy as well. And it's, um, it, it works if you work it. 
And that's why I say sometimes you've got to find what's the one that's going to work for you. And then create a strategy and a plan. Learn about it if you need to learn about it. Work with somebody that can show you or teach you, etc. Um, and have a strong strategy, but make sure that you've got, you know, you're working in the right place with that as well. And I can certainly recommend some people. Okay, so I'll open it up for questions. We've done very well. We're just about on the hour. <laughs> so uh, let's open it up for questions. Yeah, huge. Thank you, Maquette. And um, feel free to unmute yourselves if you want to come on with yeah. the question now. I'll get started because I know usually there's a pause initially. So just to get the conversation going, um, I learn a lot of my IT from my teenagers, like you do, yes. social media. And I've got a question about Instagram stories. So my daughter, 22, uses Instagram stories. And because of that, I often miss what she posts because they're very temporary posts. Yeah rather than putting up an Instagram post that stays on your feed forever, basically. So yeah. I was interested that you focused on stories rather than posts. And I just wondered if you could say something yeah. to that, what the advantage Absolutely. of the story is. Thank you for that. For some reason, people are following, there's a greater following on in, um, uh, IG stories. And guess what? Facebook stories is also very similar. It's only up for a short amount of time and they and it can get e easily lost so the best solution for that is to create the post and then put it up on stories um, so any idea am i yeah i am still unmuted any idea then what's the fascination with the instant and temporary appeal of story i don't know no, okay. It can only go by statistics. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the best way to do it is, um, yeah, do it as a post and then create the story. Now, the other thing about the story, though, this, this is relevant, is that you can be a lot more promotional in the story. So if you're doing, and I'm going to talk about Facebook as well. So if you go into Facebook, your personal page, you're not, you're not allowed to, um, ask for a call of action, like a really heavy marketing or promotional thing. You can't say, come and um, sign up for my this or that, right? You can do that in a normal post. If it's in video, you can do any call of action in a video, both on Facebook and Instagram. However, it is recommend, so with the Facebook private, Facebook group is different, but Facebook private, the only way that you can be very promotional, there's certain ways you can set up your profile that helps, is to do it as a story. And then you just keep reposting it. Mm -hmm. So you can actually set it up in the story, you can hold it, you can actually keep it with you to redo it without going into the lesson. But there's a way you can actually hold it and just say, oh, well, I'll just re click the button every two days on this and it will repost until you're finished with that campaign. Fascinating. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> okay, people, There's who so else has options. got a question? Unmute yourself. You might, I mean, there was such a lot of work there. Christelle. <laughs> Thank please. you. Um, I would like to ask I, on Facebook. Um, I saw a post that somebody posted on um, that came onto my. I don't even know what you call it. I'm very your timeline. Getting in here, yeah, the timeline. Um, that said that if you go through this process, then um, you will see more people's posts, and it will open up um, your your Facebook more to more to view more posts. And I don't know if it also makes it open for others to. To more people to view your posts so I'm um, just wondering how do you reach the people because it seems like you just get the same few I think think 25 people's posts that you see mm -hmm. um, there are lots of different ways that Facebook read and their algorithms are confusing and they change all the time so whatever I tell you today might change tomorrow for a start and um, <clears throat> but there definitely are strategies and ways that you can. Uh, are you talking about seeing other people's posts, or are you talking about 
people seeing your post? People seeing my posts. Yeah, there are definitely strategies on that. I, I, I mean, the session I do on that is like um, about five hours on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> if you do chop it up. Um, so would you, would you, um, if you, if you and that's only organic traffic. I'm only talking about organic traffic, not paid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would just like to ask, um, so with the Facebook, would you post something just pub in public or would you yeah. not go into public posting? No, definitely, definitely. Like your private, like, sorry, your personal page. You can set up your personal page to also be the front door for your business. So yes. you want to make it public. You don't want to make it private. And then you must have it that it reflects one, your lifestyle, but also that you start putting, like, I, I truly have only just opened up my Facebook. I never had to use it before because I was, I worked with other influencers and now I'm sort of out by myself and doing it all myself again. So I've only just stepped back into doing that for myself, but you, you, want to have a combination of lifestyle and then you can also thread business stuff into it as well. But you just can't put a blatant um, promotional, you can't put a promotional post. You can have photos and you can have videos. Thank you. In the nutshell, <laughs> but make it public. And then if there's any inappropriate photos, get rid of them. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've posted one um, um, article on, on, on public and um, there was a lot of strange traffic coming through and private messaging that wasn't appropriate. Oh, um, you can so stop that, Crystal. You can go into the settings. And yes. you can actually make the, go through all the settings and read every little bit carefully and just make sure that you have, I think it's called review on. And when that means that if anyone else wants to post something on your site, it, yes. you have, you review it first. You yes. have to approve I it. I had that tip up, but there was a lot, there was a lot of, people Comments. trying to connect with me privately on my mess, private messages. Uh, that was, it was inappropriate. Yeah. Just block yeah. them. Just block them. Yeah. I just blocked them immediately, but I had yeah. to friend them first to see, okay, this is not working and then unfriend them again. So no, you don't, you can click on their face and look at their Facebook okay. page before you friend them. Okay. I never friend anyone until I have a look at their page. Yes. Because like you, it's too easy. You know, you can get these spammy ones that has one photo and one photo of them and you yes. know there's something wrong. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you don't Thank have to you. friend them first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the hints that I do for that, Christelle, is I always go on to their page and I look yeah. at whether they have any friends showing up and if there's any mutual friends. Exactly. Yes. So that's one of my first go-to places is, do they know anyone else I know or is this just a random, yeah. you know? I do the same. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. All right, no one else has a lot of- No other no questions, things. I can't okay. believe it. So let me, throw <laughs> another, let me throw another question in then. If I can. <laughs> and uh, you talked about the, kind of email sharing lists in terms of, you know, let's hook up and I'll share my email list and use. How does that fit with GDPR in Europe? Oh, good question. I probably can't answer it because I'd have to know what the laws are. Okay. So I, I, I suspect if you're in Europe, you'd really need to look at that because yeah, absolutely. You, you'll have really strict controls on who you can share those email addresses with. Yeah. And if to do that, you would have to let your tribe know that you were sharing that email list with somebody else. So just be cautious of that. And yeah. Australia and New Zealand are heading the same way. Um, oh, we're going to have a version of it very soon based on GDPR. So, um, well, Canada has a double opt in. So I'm wondering whether the Europe system is a double opt in. Nah, it is a double option opt in, but it's really, really okay. tight. So here, you can then share 
and yep. what so here's how I would go about it to to properly get around it is that I would actually have a email that would have a link in it and I'm just thinking out of the box here but I think this is how it would work you'd have an email to your list and say hey I want to introduce you to boom, boom, boom. if you're interested in that click on this link and then they select whether they want to be opt-in or not yep yep just be cautious the GDPR has a massive you, you fine attached to it if you've misused your database in any way you can't you can't just say here's my list you can't no. do that no. it has to be self-selected so the you it's an introductory email that would say, hey, I want to introduce you to, ma da 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 da, and then you go down, and there's no problem with that. And if you want to find out more about that, you do it like a like an email introductory stroke sales, not sales letter, but you know, you're you're actually introducing them, and here's why would I believe you should connect with them, mm -hmm. and then they opt in themselves. Yeah, yeah, and even if you're this side of the world, you only need one European person on your database that you have to be covered by GDPR laws. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so um, a lot of people over here think it doesn't affect them, but because we're a global village these days, it absolutely yeah. does. Yeah, good. Thank you for that. That's wonderful to know. Any other questions? Come on, people. You've just had an <laughs> hour of amazing content. You must be buzzing with <laughs> questions or insights. What stuck out for you most then? What yeah, are you going to go and do? Yeah, tell me the platform that you think you'd like to go focus on with beside your, just in the chat box, please. Write which platform you think is the one that you would focus on initially. Mm -hmm. I'm very curious. Mm. Oh, someone put Snapchat. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. And TikTok's another one coming up and up at the moment. Yes, I haven't had enough time to research it, but uh, my first look at it, I went, uh, I don't no. like it. <laughs> I don't like it. There's this absolute obsession with very short, sharp, instantaneous yeah gratification yes. how do you know which platform oh how do you know which platform to that's a great question shelly thank you so the first thing i always do is this there's two things is one is um where are your main one is where's your audience hanging out so shelly i don't know what i need to know i'd need to know what you do and who you serve and then you'd need to do certain research to discover where they're hanging out. Does that help? Yeah, Shelley, go on, tell her what you do. Get her view on yeah, where your audience is. I can't see you. Okay, so it's just a matter of being where your people are. Yes, that's the main thing. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because, you know, I knew that I wanted to do LinkedIn and when I first looked at it, I went, I don't know where to start, how to do it, and I didn't have the right knowledge given to me. Um, so it was a bit of a mess. And so I went down the road of organic um, traffic for Facebook, which I've just started with. And basically though, I will probably go back to LinkedIn because I love the way that I have control of it and I feel like I've got more control of it uh, in a way. It reaches organically an amazing amount of people um, when you set it up the right way. And it does require some work at the beginning, but then you can actually automate everything in a really beautiful way. So that's the way I'll go. Uh, um, and maybe that at another, if you get onto my Facebook group page, then um which i'll invite you into um that i'll have more information about that in a few weeks i'm probably the end anything of the to say around the shift so um you know word on the ground is linkedin mm. has hugely changed its um feel and its culture and is becoming more like facebook 
and not everybody is liking that because LinkedIn was very much the professional forum, Facebook yeah. was the social one, and um, LinkedIn has made that kind of transition. Any view on that in terms of, you know, if you're looking, let's say you're brand new on the scene as a coach, if, if you were starting again, where would you start now in the light of where things are? I, for my, once again, it goes back to who's your, who, what do you do and who's your audience? Where do, where do they hang out? and what you prefer so you know the thing is with linkedin it is mainly um business to business however there is a strong growing of business to consumer in linkedin mainly i would say because you can set up co uh, conversations there so um but where do your people hang out and and the other thing is you want to make when you're looking at your audience you've got to find an audience that not only has a problem you can solve but are they prepared to invest in themselves to solve that problem and where's those people mm. you know yeah yeah and strongly i'd come back with something you said earlier in terms of build the rapport and relationship first there's nothing worse than connecting with someone and the first thing you get is an ad yeah, I love it yeah. when people go, oh, I see we're connected. Tell me something about what you do or what's your interest yeah. at the moment. And you actually build the relationship first. That's right. Absolutely. It doesn't matter really what platform you're on. That's what you should be focusing on is build the relationships. And, you know, a wise mentor of mine many, many years ago, his name's Ross Hancock. He's uh, retired now and he um he's uh, he's australian and uh he used to say you need to fill your pipeline and you nurture that pipeline of people and back in those days this is before the internet and i would go out to small businesses and knock on their doors to see if they were open to having a conversation and you know you, you he would say a minimum of 200 well with social media and everything it's that list is is probably a bit more than 200 in our network of people some people say you know you need 3000 on facebook maybe less connection i would say probably less connections on linkedin but it's when you have when you're working or you're connecting with the right people and i'll give you a statistic that's really fabulous if you think of that out of every hundred people, because I think it explains it perfectly, this, out of every hundred people, 3% are ready to buy now. It's just a matter of whether they're going to buy from you or not. Right? 3% are ready to make a decision and buy now. 47% are very interested and they are very likely to buy, buy and I'm going to use the word tomorrow, and tomorrow could be anything from that tomorrow to the next two years. So when you think about focusing, not on the 3%, but focusing on the 40, because the 3%, if you're coming across the right people and you can help them, they're going to drop through anyway. But if you're focusing on nurturing the 47%, at the right time, they're going to say, okay, I'm ready to do something now. What can we do? Do you like that? Okay, so that puts it in really good perspective. So you're, you're 40%, 47%, if you like, are in your pipeline. So then no does not mean no now forever. <laughs> And that's why it's really good to have a good sales process so that you and a nurturing process and that so that those you don't lose those 47 percent and that the other clients come through that at the right time so the first focus is just to build audience build your tribe mm. I'll give you an example of someone who reached out um, just on a, a LinkedIn post this morning and immediately I went, hell yeah, and immediately then gave something back. So um, she's a New Zealander. She's in the kind of healthy workplace type space. Um, she's recently developed an app and she said, you know, with COVID going on, I'm 
I'm willing to give that app free for, I can't remember, was it 90 days or something, um, just as a, a gift to help you in the COVID situation. And just DM me if you want to um, have it. And I, I know her vaguely. I don't know her well, but I know her. And I said, hey, yeah, I'd love to have it. And I, oh, it was if you're coaching healthcare professionals affected by COVID. Wow. So I kind of, I connected with her and I said, yeah, I'd love to have access to it. And yes, I offer free coaching for healthcare professionals at the moment who are affected by COVID. She came back with a beautiful message and said, oh, that's delicious. Thank you for everything you do. I'd love to gift it to you. So my response was fantastic. And because I will have seen it, it will be so much easier for me to recommend it to totally. other people into the future. Mm -hmm. And it was absolutely exactly. authentic on both sides, but yeah. as a win-win. And I thought that's the sort of connection I love rather than feeling like someone's trying to get something out of me. Yeah, thank you for that story. That's mm -hmm. just so beautiful. And that's the way it happens. Yeah. And I willingly said, yeah, I'll recommend your product. Obviously, if it's good, when I see it, I'm sure it yeah. will be. Yeah. Um, but that I will then happily recommend it. And she's got free advertising for letting me have access for whatever it is, 90 days or something. It's absolute genius. Lovely. Sounds interesting. <laughs> Great. So any, anyone, um, I have a LinkedIn account, but was contacted by someone with a fake account possibly. Yeah, that can happen, um, Patrice, for sure. So just ban them. And another thing, just on these LinkedIn's or even Facebook, every, particularly if you grow, start growing your list quite big, you want to probably scale it back and keep get rid of the ones that aren't active at all and only just work with the active ones. That can often make your life easier. Um, I have a question. Um, I find... Uh, making the, the getting new articles out there, uh, especially on Facebook and LinkedIn, um, it's for me it's very tiring and it takes a lot of time. I don't know if it's just because I'm in the beginning of you know trying to be out there online, um, and so it takes it for me. It I don't know if it it doesn't feel I'm not comfortable with that yet. Um, and I know people do something like um, that they automate it and then sometimes I know a few people that do that and then I pick up their automation of what get, what's getting posted for them and then, you know, then I don't trust that, you know, that that person is really authentic or real if you understand what I'm saying. It's, well, I'm sure they put all the work into it initially. <laughs> Sorry? They probably put a lot of work into it initially. You know, I mean, automation, um, like years ago, we used to say for email, even, yeah, even say email campaigns, we'd sit down for a week or two and write 52 emails that are full of value. And then they would go out automatically one a week in the okay. newsletter okay so it's not that the work's not done by you i mean automation is and what's beautiful about automation is then your clients gain um security in what you provide on what day on what rhythm okay. does that make sense so yes. you know and and i'm not even there myself with all the new material because i'm sort of starting from putting all this together in this new way. Um, but that's what helps even posting on Facebook and things like that. That's why the automations are so wonderful because then your audience is going to count on it. They're going mm. to go, I know that I've got an, an email newsletter that I get every Monday and I go looking for it now. <laughs> does that make I think sense? It, it does come back to though who's writing the material that will be automated and i get what you say christelle i had someone who i followed quite regularly respected they started outsourcing someone else mm. to write their posts and it just didn't feel like them the language was different the feel was different i'm like oh well if it's not going to be your work i'm not as interested in reading your material and there's there's pluses and minuses with yeah. what uh, Suzanne also said because you can even have like a branding on Facebook or Instagram or on YouTube and you've got X Y let's say you've got X um, 
a hundred, I'm just going to use the round number, a hundred followers. And then you change your branding for, re, for good reasons or for reasons that you believe are right for your business, for where your business is at, because a lot of decisions are relative to so many um, parts and you will lose some people. You will probably lose just by, even by color changing colors. You can lose people. And one of two things will happen. You'll gain other followers who like what you're doing. And some of those people that you lost may come back because they know the foundation of your information is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of, the, one of the things I want to throw out there, and I'll tell you a funny story that kind of really brought it to um, my mind really, was I had somebody in the community who kind of said to me on a call one day, um, something about sharing on LinkedIn and Facebook. And I can only, I can guarantee one person will share my stuff. And I knew that was me, right? And I felt like saying, well, lucky you, at least you've got one that does because it doesn't get returned. So I can't say in return, you always share mine. Now I didn't say that to them. That was what was going through my mind. And it's made me wonder, we've got 2,300 coaches we have about just under half of that active on Facebook and a lot less active in LinkedIn in terms of sharing and braining stuff. If just a small group of us were committed to supporting each other and embraining by sharing, not just putting a like up, and in fact, likes on Facebook aren't very good anyway. You want a, one of the stronger ones. So you either want a love or a humor or a, you know, something likes almost get dismissed but if we actually committed to putting a strong reaction writing a comment and then sharing that valuable post article whatever we could hugely increase all of the profile of embraining on social media very good point Um, Susanna, uh, Suzanne, I, I was thinking, I always felt uncomfortable with sharing um, something it was because it felt like I'm using this stuff to promote it on my Facebook. But I think it's a wonderful idea. Um, and I, I, I think it's rare that I saw that she does it in a very beautiful way where she acknowledges the person and say, thank you for the, your original post and then give some say something about it and then uh, sharing that post so i i think yeah. if we can commit everybody to doing that i think it's a beautiful idea yeah and even when you share on the original post shows that's so right. the only way it doesn't when you're using somebody else's material is when you don't share their post you go into their link and then reshare the link oh, okay then they get okay. wiped out of the matrix yeah. And something to add to that. So let's say, um, because I, it's, it's funny you bring this up because I was actually thinking this um, yesterday. <laughs> and I said, right, I'm going to have to start, I want this and this and this, start to share other people's stuff. Is that the important thing when you share other people's things, whether it's on Facebook or LinkedIn, is your personal comments. So there's different ways you can do it. Um, one is yes you can share the link and two is you can actually take a photograph of what it is like the post and then you write when this is what i learned from this post and you put your viewpoint or i came across this post today and i really want to share it with you because so it's just taking it, keeping your face there, your personality into it. It takes a little bit more thought, but it does help build what you're doing and credibility. And then, Crystal, this could be interesting for you because I, you said you're talking about articles. You can take somebody else's article and you may not actually put the link that takes them away from you because that's not what facebook or linkedin want either they want them you staying on the platform that you're on but 
if you photograph it and put it as a post and then put your comments about what you learned about it. And you can say, you can actually have the link there, but have it more, um, I don't know if people use Canva, but what I'm starting to do is do the photograph and if there's a link or an accreditation to give to a photographer or something, I, I actually um, put it as a visual on the post in Canva. So it's one, like one piece and then people can see the link and choose to go there themselves. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it's just something to be aware of with Facebook and LinkedIn that they prefer you to stay within the platform if possible, to continue your conversations within the platform rather than go out. Mm. And if I could put another plea for embrainers, because we're all embraining, right? This is to support yep. the embraining community. Please, on all your posts where you're writing articles or sharing posts around embraining, use hashtag embraining, hashtag embit. Oh, thank you for that. I'll keep forgetting my hashtags. So hashtag embraining. And hashtag embit. Um, okay, great. Both. Because then they're searchable. But you know what's also interesting about putting hashtags is that um, they're searchable and other people see you. So inadvertently, other people who see you and go, oh, that person looks, she looks interesting or he looks interesting. I'll check that out as well. And so that is another way of collaboration and reaching other audiences. So thank you for bringing that up because yeah. I really, really wanted to add that into this and I forgot. Yeah. And Grant's vision, you know, if you haven't gone and watched those two videos I put up a little yeah. while ago of the interview I did with Grant, his vision was about co-creativity and collaboration right so while i recognize we are all individual companies and i get that above and beyond that we're all part of embraining and if we could all also have that in our frame when we're sharing then it would just do everybody a favor and the whole kind of community would benefit and i think sometimes that gets forgotten and people do something that is just promoting them which is fine, that's your business. Um, but I think there's space for us consciously and deliberately within our strategies, having how are we also promoting embraining just for the greater good. Um, yeah. Enrico's got a question. Unmute yourself, yeah, No, I've just got a, I've got a, a thought. That's all. Yeah, that's <laughs> collaboration. <laughs> Yeah, it's more a thought, Suzanne, in, than, than a question about what you just said. Uh, because I'm thinking about myself, the uh, first critic, of course, of myself. And I find myself that many times I still don't understand. I didn't understand what exactly, what kind of coach I am. So if you see yourself in a community, let's say in branding, and everyone is trying to get some visibility. As you say, everyone has his own business. And uh, so if I share some value or some content that can be used by someone else, copy, recopy, whatever it is, uh, it became confusing. In the moment that each of us as in branding, we know exactly what kind of coaches we are. Let's say you work a particular in, in, in a working environment. So you co contact directly people that are involved in working. I can be involved in specializing relationships. Someone else can be specialized in something else. So when we are specific, right. how we apply specifically in branding to our coaching, I think that that process will become much relaxed and much easier because I'm happy to support anyone else for it, let's say, because I know that my content is about relationships. So I share that with you that are in work with someone else that is in leadership, someone else is in sport, mindset, whatever it is. So that will be much easier, the collaboration, because there will be not the fear only say, oh, I put someone like that and someone else get the idea and make something better. I Enrico, I want to thank you for bringing that up. No, I'm asking, uh, before I make it, I had this conversation with Grant, mm, I don't know, a few years so ago. So let me, let me just take that a little further because I've you know, worked with a lot of coaches. And so in one workshop I was doing, like there's 10 coaches who have all gone down through the same coaching plat learning, right? At the, and what we focused on was, you know, what is your area of genius and who do you serve? 
And at the end of it, when they gave their, talked about their message of what they did and who they served, not one of them sounded the same. Mm. So my belief and, and um, is, I support exactly what you're saying, because when you're clear about what you specialize in and who you serve, then it's, we might be using the same system, but it's, it's going to sound incredibly different. I mean, Absolutely. I use embraining in sales. Absolutely. And if you think about the, in the moment that you don't have the clarity yet, is yeah. when you are, as we've been saying, using different platforms, different messages, different worldings, so you try different things, and maybe you can stop in someone else's backyard and say, oh, oops, I didn't want to, but it happened because you're trying to get some kind of clarity. response from, yeah. from some, some people that be, will possibly become your, your clients. So I believe that that is really crucial. Maybe something, I don't know if I can do anything about this in the community, but be really like a, uh, yeah. uh, I don't want to say to be labels, you know, you are a relationship coach, you are this, you are that, because there are labels, but be clear what, what we stand in. So What you stand for. Yeah, and so you became that unique, you're already unique by yourself, because yes. no one has your voice. But if there is also amplified in what you do and how you apply your branding, which I believe that there will be, we take the bit of uh, fear and stress of people being copied and, and mm -hmm. no, 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 understand. Like and and like Vanessa that. made Vanessa made a good set, uh, comment. She said the approach is different. So how you approach it is different to how. Christelle or Susan or Clive yeah, or myself approach it. Yeah, so there's lots of differences. Yeah. Yeah, but the approach is really the starting point. Yeah, approach is like a technicality, I would say. I'm talking about concept and, and, and sharing ideas, sharing content. Uh, the approach is different, but the content is the same, can create confusion, can create really. Uh, this is my idea, but I don't know if I'm wrong. Yeah, Enrique, I hear you. Uh, yes. I go back to hashtags, right? So yes, yes. I always hashtag embraining, yeah. but in most of my work, I'll also have hashtag stress or hashtag well-being. Yeah. So yeah. it's got a flavor to it. It's not yeah. just embraining, but I make sure embraining's in there. Now yeah. that means it's not relevant for everyone to share into their audience because they might not be interested in stress or well-being. Yeah. So I'm not saying everyone should share everything. I'm saying that there's an awful lot of material out there that could be easily shared that yeah. isn't. And people, I think, are focusing on the fear of competition and difference yeah. rather than seeing the abundance mentality yeah. that if actually we work together and all shared the embraining that was relevant for us, mm. because we're so unique, it's not competitive at all. Yeah, is, is, I think it's really an in, a very is is in the subconscious of people. I believe oh, yeah. sure. um, so uh, to I, remove that that, exactly. that weight and that yeah. chains of, of uh, fear of being you know left on the side because someone else will take advantage of that. Yeah. I, it's a it's a process of working, and, I, and I'm talking to you really openly because I had this yeah. conversation yeah. twenty years ago. I deal with it with every group of people. And coaches. I'm still I'm still. <laughs> Now, you, we know that Embrani is extremely powerful in empowering people. So I offer myself as an empowerment coach to small businesses. But I'm seeing that I've had a lot of requests that are just, as you just say, is about well-being, mental and spiritual well-being, mental and emotional well-being. So I got, uh, I, I'm plus made in my, my message on that path. But I can understand that I will go in someone else back here say oh now what we do you know i don't want to create that kind of friction that create Can the I raise say the and, uh, sorry yeah even if i just want to say this because yeah. this is about so what i'm hearing here is that what needs to happen then enrico it's more about getting really super crystal clear about what it is you do and who you serve that's yeah. the one thing. Then there's your approach, right? Yeah. And those three things, you could have somebody next door to you calling themselves an empowerment coach, if you call yourself an empowerment coach, and yet it's totally different. Even if they both use embraining, it will be different. Yeah. Okay. 
that's one thing. So you've, there is a mental shift there. I mean, I do a lot of work with coaches on this to, to help them get through that mental shift. The other is how many clients do you need a year to at, as, at what point, you know, like if you're wanting a hundred thousand dollar business, then how many clients at what price point do you need? Yeah. So is there enough people in the world oh, yeah. that are going to, yeah. yeah. And yeah, the other thing is, the other thing is the person that is attracted to you and resonates with you may not resonate with Karen or Vanessa or, or Brian. Yeah. No, I perfectly agree with that. The, my, my comment was about the initially what Suzanne was saying about I had this idea that maybe if people will know what you do, what I do, what Brian does, or what Krista does, okay, I know that one is the relationship, so I, maybe they would feel a bit more relaxed in sharing and branding material because they would uh -huh. be. In that, that was my idea initially. That uh -huh. Yeah, discussion. good. Yeah. yeah. That's my idea. Okay. Hi, Enrico. Awesome. I, I also deliberately and purposefully share people who do exactly the same as me. Yeah, but because you are you, because that's, that's, you, that's who you are. And it's not all, not all of them. No, I'm, I'm feeling, now you create this group. And in fact, I wanted to talk to you, but maybe we talk when we finish <laughs> this. And, and, and I realized in the last two weeks, I'm going through some uh, incredibly big changes with this yeah. in, in yeah. being, I, I contact people, I coach people every day, I'm on webinars, but I, I really, I've been struggling, struggling with myself. So I'm not much on social media, I'm not much doing some work that I should have done with Suzanne and the group, because, not because I'm, I'm afraid or because I'm struggling with myself. So Enrico, I, kn I know just a couple of MBIT coaches who could really help you. With that. <laughs> I know, I know, but just, uh, you know, for how long we've been in this community. We've been, I don't know, 13, 2013, I, when I got certification, I think I was just after you. Uh, honestly, yeah, I can reach out to some of them, some of them. You, know, you only need I, to reach out to one, right? And that, yeah, that's what we're saying is yeah. if we go with the abundance mentality, yeah. enough of us and there's seven point whatever six billion people on the planet, yeah. Yeah. we don't need to compete. There's more than I enough. Know, I understand. And I'm really happy to put your name out to the people who need no, no, no. And Yeah, don't misunderstand. It was not about me. No, no, no. It was, it was, a, it was a feeling. Too how we put the brainy out there because yeah. for how long we've been discussing with this migrant forever. Yep. Now, how come that we are 2,500 people or coaches in this community and this content is really, it's really, really cool. Tiny. We had 18 people today, 16 people on the call. You know, that's, that's a point. And it's just an example of how many of these 2,300 people are not collaborating, not coming together and expanding and branding and branding message. Who knows? Maybe majority of them or many of them are not coaches. I don't know. We've been checking why we don't collaborate. It's not I about think what we, I was giving, I was on a leadership summit the other day. Yeah. And um, one of the things I said, and he asked me a question about how do you get kind of mass following? How do you get? And I likened it to being in a primary school playground. Yeah. So there will be little groups who are holding hands and playing games. And eventually one little group will look over the playground and go, oh, I quite like what they're doing. Let's go over and see what they're doing and we'll join in and it becomes a slightly bigger group. And ultimately, anyone who wants to join in, the group will grow and grow and grow. But I, I think it's almost unrealistic to go into a playground, stand in the middle and go, right, everyone play the same game with me now. I think I have to go into a corner and create a little group that, attracts attention because it's fun and it's lively and energetic so i think there are other little groups mm. who are doing stuff yeah and we're all holding that same bigger intention maybe at the moment not all of those one we might not even know what all little groups are out there playing and two at the moment they might not yet have joined hands but that's okay we'll mm. do what we do in our little group holding the invitation that anyone else can come and join us if they want to yeah yeah a uh, million dollars question for you uh i, I know grant for me or me at no 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 for you for you <laughs> particularly you and uh, it's a question that 
I know Grant will answer because we've been asking this question many times. Do you really believe that the way we stand at the moment with the interaction that we have and the shame that we have, we'll be able to take and bring it really exponentially to where I believe it should be? If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be doing 12 air days on it. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool. I do it because I absolutely Clive has, believe in it. Yeah, un un unmute yourself, please, Clive. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. I just actually wanted to ask a social media question, actually. Um, and it's just to get a bit of clarity. I mean, I'm getting from what you're saying. I'm a bit of a Luddite when it comes to social media, and I'm trying to change that. But I am changing that. Um, so with the Facebook, I've got my own Facebook account with my friends on it. Um, and what I'm hearing from you is that's the one I should be working with. Um, but I've also, my partner's helped me set up a, um, a business page and another like personal page that's actually my business. Okay, yeah, good question. So the strategy that I was taught by this person that made a six-figure income out of Facebook. Firstly, I'm just going to mention the business page. The business page is a place where you can actually do paid ads. If you're not prepared to spend about $500 a month or more um, on paid advertising, then I would not open a business page at this moment. This is, the, this is how I've been taught, right? <coughs> Your, you can, so I understand your personal page, you should still, it, so the decision firstly is are you going to go into advertising or are you going to do organic traffic first or what? Can I ask you that? Well, I was going to do um, organic traffic, but I was just going to do small paid ads. So, and in actual fact, it's not a business, well, it is a business page, yeah. yeah. Business page, yeah. You can try. I mean, my recommendation is you don't do, do paid ads unless it's try. It, it's going to be trial and error of what works and what doesn't, because there's a lots of things. I don't teach paid because I find it too confused, too difficult. I, I work with somebody. If I'm going to do that, I'll just outsource it, right? So you want to know that what you are doing is going to work. If you, so, you you should trial it a little bit on in other like in your face i'm just going to go before i go any further into that facebook personal page is <clears throat> is the place people will come to if you're doing an organic process like mining like i was explaining before where you actually find people with issues and problems and you contribute in other groups and um, other groups and talk with them and develop conversations, you can invite them to come to be a friend in your personal page. This is why it's so important to have your personal page as your business considerate. Your friends are there, but you want to be able to draw more people to it. And then when they're there, you can invite them to the group. I guess what my concern is that I'll lose some of my friends because if I put a lot of business stuff, is that just collateral damage? Well, yeah, you see, yeah. <laughs> I heard that come up the other day. And that just, you've just got to explain to your friends, hey, I'm running a business and this is the way I'm choosing to go at this stage. You can still be part of it. I'm still going to have like, like you, 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 the strategy should include at least like a, a lifestyle photo every day. It's not that you're going to be able to do... Um, 100% business on your personal page, but it's the first point on your personal page. But that's your first point of call where people get to know, like, and trust you as a human being, like your friends, right? And then the people that are suitable, you invite them to the private group page that anyone can find, but they have to press, let's, I want to join. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So, so there's a number of people in embraining that have chosen to, I invited them to the group and they either said, yes, I want it or no, they don't. All right. May I, may so I say is, something? Yeah, Vanessa. Yeah. Uh, when I used to have my other business, I 
what I actually did was, because I know that family and friends are not always the best people to approach. Um, however, on my, on my Facebook page, this is my friends and family one, what I'd actually done was put like a poll. Um, and it was about certain questions just to get their feedback and no more than three questions so you don't lose their attention. Um, and then on the very bottom, after the survey, asked, look, if you want more information, uh, this is what I'm doing. Um, let me nice. know, give me your email address. And so it's up to them if they want me to approach them and send them the information or the link to my business page. So that's how I sort of sift through those who want my help um, rather than forcing my business with family and friends and it made it a lot more easier than um, to basically go well you know this is what I'm doing support me um, you know and it might give it a bad connotation as in not I, I'm just going to say Vanessa none of my personal friends are on my on my private mm. group not none yep. of them except the ones that chose to go there after they visited yeah yeah okay so it's not like you're trying to get all your family and friends into you exactly the yeah. private the private group and clive in the private group the main reason for having a private group is that you can advertise or promote in there to your heart's content without paying any advertising so it's almost like you can also trial that and then put it into your facebook business to pay that's yeah. one way of doing it. There's, there's another, you know, another way I have seen is somebody who only has the personal page and the business fan page, but she does a video on it every single week that has value. And then she does paid advertising with it as well. And she doesn't have a private group. And when I saw that, I went, oh, shivers, I really like that. <laughs> I wish I'd, you know, maybe that's better. I don't know. It's trial and error and Facebook changes, changed the rules. Excellent. Okay, Thank I'm going to take that lull because I'm really sorry. I have something I have to go to at 12 and I need my computer. So um, we Thank had you. two hours, which is amazing. A huge, huge I'm thanks again gonna... to Maquette. It's seven minutes to the hour, so I'm just wondering if everyone can just put one takeaway into the chat box for me, please. Yeah, I have to get ready though, Maquette, so I'm going to have okay. to go. I'm sorry. Um, I will talk to Maquette about whether or not we put on another call. I think they're hugely valuable. I would love it if she was willing, um, but it is, you know, use of her Let's time talk. gifted to the community. So we'll talk and we'll let you know. Thank you so much for supporting it. Thank you, Maquette, for your time My pleasure. Again. and just, you. you know, the knowledge base is just phenomenal um, and I'm sure it's Great. a huge help to everybody. Thank you. And yeah. stay safe, everybody. Um, and you know, and welcome let's to support reach each out. Other. Yeah, let's support each other on social media. Lovely. Yeah. Love some of those. I love the hashtag of MBIT. I'm going to start doing that. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.